Okay, so again, just a formality. If we could do an inventory of the materials that I have, also um, just to make sure everyone has everything before we begin. You should all have on the top a copy of the slides. Okay. Okay, and then you should have a four-page document called Application for Registration. Okay. And then you should have this uh, thicker document. It's about 45 pages. Um, it's in a PEGA guide. It says education is what survives when what is being learned has been forgotten. Everyone have that? And then finally, you should have a document called the Complementary Study Syllabus. That looks like this. Okay. And then you should have the request for academic documents. Does everyone have these documents? Okay. All right, so just to give you a basic overview of the agenda, it's, uh, we're going to start with a very good uh, introduction to PEGA, and we're going to go into registration in very good detail. We're going to look at all the forms that you need to, to apply. Again, this is where the focus of our workshop is going to be today. The whole point of this workshop is to get you started with the registration process. Um, to get that ball rolling. And throughout, please ask any questions you, you would like. Okay, so in Canada, unlike a lot of, or a lot of uh, jurisdictions around the world, engineering is a licensed profession. In order to call yourself an engineer, to practice as a professional in engineering, you have to be licensed with uh, a regulatory body. In Alberta, that regulatory body is a PEGA. Um, Many parts of the world don't have this level of registration. They might have certification in engineering, they might have some licensing in engineering, but regulation of engineering doesn't exist in a lot of parts of the world. Regulation meaning there are laws and the government has their hand in the profession. A PEGA is part of the Alberta government, okay? And in each province in Canada, the regulatory bodies controlling engineering are related to the provincial government. So there are certain acts and laws. Before a PEGA can change these acts and laws, they have to go through approval over at the legislature. Okay? So um, that's a bit unique in, in, in Alberta. So a PEGA stands for the Alberta Professional uh, Associate, sorry, the Association of Professional Engineers, Geologists and Geophysicists of Alberta. And after that introduction, I know that you're all engineers, so I'm not going to really talk about the geosciences uh, today. It's a regulatory authority created in 1920 by the Alberta government. Um, and in 1920, just like in recent years, um, Alberta was a booming province. Economically, uh, they recently discovered the oil wealth uh, around this part of the province. And there were people coming from all over North America, coming from all over the world, saying, I'm an engineer. Give me a piece of the pie. I want to make some money and I want to be a part of this uh, great thing. As you can imagine, without regulation and so many people coming from all over the world um, claiming to be engineers, there were some problems. Problems with you know, quality of the work being done, business practices, ethics, um, and, and so on. So the government of Alberta, led by the citizens of Alberta, the businesses of Alberta, and engineers themselves, decided to form a PEGA in order to regulate um, engineers. If you're looking for the basic laws that govern your field, uh, you'll find them in the Engineering Geological Geophysical Professions Act of Alberta, or the EGDP Act. You can see this online at apega.org if you're interested. And the primary purpose of a PEGA and all that they do is protecting the public. Okay. So again, there's a bit of repetition in this presentation, but it's just to make sure that the main points are well understood. Uh, in Alberta, a PEGA has been given the authority to regulate the profession of engineering, and only a PEGA can do that. Okay. So in order to be registered as a member of, of uh, a PEGA, part of the process is evaluating your credentials in, in terms of your academics, your work experience, and, and other qualifications that we'll discuss in detail um, through the presentation. 
Uh, I've added this slide because a lot of people ask this question about Engineers Canada. What is Engineers Canada? Has anyone heard of Engineers Canada? Or the Canadian Council of Professional Engineers? Okay. So, Engineers Canada, or the Canadian Council of Professional Engineers, is a national body. All the regulatory associations, including APEGA, um, PEO in Ontario, if some of you have some familiarity with other organizations in Canada, all the provincial regulatory bodies are a part of Engineers Canada. But, uh, which sounds really neat, there's a national organization that's involved in engineering, but this national organization has no regulatory authority, and they're not involved in the regulation of engineering. Um, just in case some of you are wondering. Uh, some people that I, I teach this workshop to have some familiarity with Engineers Canada because they have had their academic documents evaluated by Engineers Canada through the immigration process. Sometimes Citizenship and Immigration Canada um, doesn't have a record of an institution or a certain degree. Sorry. So CIC, or Citizenship and Immigration Canada, will send engineers to Engineers Canada to have their documents evaluated for, for immigration purposes only. It's not for, it's not for the regulation uh, of engineering, it's only for immigration purposes. If you or other people you know have had an Engineers Canada assessment. Just a word of caution about assessments that are offered by other bodies. Um, engineers Canada we've just spoken about, IQOS. University of Toronto, there's also World Education Services, or WES. Have you, any of you heard of these organizations? Yeah. IQOS, right? IQOS. Okay, maybe WES, obviously the University of Toronto itself. IQOS is probably the most common for people in Alberta. IQOS is the International Qualification Assessment Service, and um, when, when newcomers arrive in Alberta, quite often they're told by the settlement organizations you should go to IQOS. Go to IQOS, go to IQOS, get your documents evaluated. This is good advice um, in, in general, but for specific, the specific needs of engineers, IQOS is not valuable. Okay, IQOS does not do a credible evaluation of engineering uh, documents. IQOS is a general education assessment service, so they have thousands of universities in their database, they have thousands of degrees and types of degrees, courses and things like that, and they will, they will give a good assessment of the, the, um, the validity of a document, but they don't assess the quality of that document, they don't look at the research of that university, they don't have any connection with the departments or the, the engineering work going on at that school, which a PEGA does, okay? So IQOS for the purpose of work in engineering or, or document evaluation in engineering is not the place to go. If you do register with IQOS, you're gonna end up um, spending money and time unnecessarily. Okay. So just a summary of what we've just discussed. Um, engineering is a regulated profession. The regulation is within the jurisdiction of the provinces. You must be licensed in each province and APEGA is the only body having that authority in Alberta. Okay. So what does APEGA do? What do they what are they useful for? Well, they're useful for registration, for what we're talking about today. They evaluate qualifications for licensure. They make sure that everybody who is claiming to be an engineer and wants to use the title of professional engineer is a qualified um, person. Once you are registered and you become a professional